good out of our belly, amen, flow rivers of living water. And it's a peace that, amen, you cannot explain, amen, that of the Holy Ghost. And we are praying that the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart be acceptable in the sight of the Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Once again, this is Wild Fellowship Ministry Evangelist Louise Prince. We greet you on Zoom. We greet you on the phone. We greet those who will watch and view this tape, this message, this service at a later date. May the anointing a man of God remain up on it like it remained up on the bones of Elijah, that those bones had enough power to resurrect the dead body. We pray when this word comes into your ear, amen, that you will feel the quickening of the Lord, amen. The word will be spirit and life even to you, even months and, and weeks after here, hallelujah. But today we're talking about this peace, this, this peace, you know, because there are all kinds of false peace and peace that people uh, think that they have, but amen, it's easily shaken. But this peace, amen, that we have that God has given us. And the subtopic is the God of peace, the God of peace. And we're going to see what the word of God tells us amen, about our peace and the peace of God. But just as an introduction, I want you to remember and try to picture God corresponding with Moses in the mountain. You remember where God was in a bush and this bush was burning, yet it was not uh, consumed. Yes, the God of fire, the God who answers by fire, the self-existing one. Amen. The In the beginning, God, the first and the last, amen, God, Alpha and Omega, God, the glory of God, the presence of God was on this bush and it was burning, amen, in a dry desert that was on fire and yet not consumed because it was the fire of God, amen, which he made, which he created, which he controls. This God spoke spoke out of the bush to Moses and told him, take off your shoes for the ground you are standing on is holy ground. Think about it. It is the Shekinah glory that has rested and ascended up on this bush. The presence of God radiated out from him through the ground to the dust so that Moses could not approach wearing his shoes that he wore in and everywhere. Because when you come into the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, you can't do like you do other places, amen, as if you are not in his presence. So he gave Moses a commandment to go tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And Moses began to ask a question. He began to say, well, who shall I say sent me? What is your name or who are you representing a Jehovah? God answered, I am that I am. In other words, I am always present tense. I am never uh, I was. I am never I will be. But in the moment, I am what I will be. In other words, I am what I need to be just when I need to be it. If you need counsel, I'm a wonderful counselor. I am an advocate. I am a paraclete. I am an attorney to defend you. But I'm also the judge of all the earth who will give the final and last say over your situation. Hallelujah. If there are lords, he's the Lord of the lords. If there's kings, he's the king over the kings. I am the king of the Jews, the almighty, the everlasting father, and the son of man. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, the door, the way, never leaving you or forsaking you. He said, I am your Lord and master, but I'm also the lamb, I'm the sacrifice, I'm the shepherd over the sheep, I'm the high priest that offers up the sacrifice. 
sacrifice. Amen. I'm the foundation. I'm the track stone. I'm the rejected stone who became the chief cornerstone. I'm the rock of ages. Hallelujah. I'm the branch. I'm the tree. I'm the vine. I'm the tree of life. I am the express image hey, of the invisible God. I'm the word of God. I'm the word made flesh. I'm the lion. I'm the tribe of, of the tribe of Judah. And I'm the lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. I'm the living water and I'm the well of salvation. I'm the fountain of life and the bread of life and the new wine. Hallelujah. I'm the lily of the valley and the rose of Sharon. I'm the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I'm the first and the last. I'm the day star, the bright and morning star. I'm in the heavens. Amen. In heavens is my throne and earth is my footstool. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I'm the Lord God strong and mighty. Amen. I know you can't speak out, but you can put something in the chat. You can send a text. Hallelujah. Amen. Wherever you want to praise the Lord. Look what he says. I'm the Prince of Peace. That's what I want to talk about today. Amen. The Prince of Peace. This peace. The God of peace. So our text is John, hallelujah, St. John 14, verse 27. And amen, Dr. Burrell quoted it as well. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Do you hear what he's saying? Peace is mine, huh? Peace belong to me. And so my peace, I'm giving it to you. Just like I give you my spirit, God's a spirit I'm gonna pour out of me, out of my flesh, Amen. Up on all, pour out of my spirit, up on all flesh. He said, I'm pouring out some peace to you. I'm pouring out some peace to you, Joe. I'm pouring out some peace to you, Kay. I'm pouring out some peace to you, Patricia. I'm pouring out some peace. I'm giving you, amen, my peace. I'm giving it to you. It ain't from the world. So don't let your heart, amen, be troubled. Don't let trouble steal your peace. Don't let trouble shake your peace. Don't let trouble stress your peace. Hallelujah to God. Let not, don't allow. That means don't give permission. Don't give permission. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Our second text is, Romans 15 and 33, it says, now the peace, now the God, I'm sorry, now the God of peace, huh? Who did who, who the peace belong to? God. God. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. So be it. So be it. God, peace be with you. Huh? Yeah. Hallelujah. This peace God gave it to me, as the song said, it is not false, fainting, fluctuating, the peace of the world. No, this is the peace of God. First Corinthians 14, 33 says, for God is not a man, a God of confusion, but of peace. So what kind of God is he? He's a God of peace. So whenever there's confusion, a whole lot of mess, a whole lot of chaos, you know, ain't no peace up in there. Hallelujah. Peace is what he desires. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Peace in heaven. Huh? That's why he kicked that devil out and a third of those angels that were following his lead. Y'all get on up out of here. He kicked them out. Hallelujah. A third of the angels because he want peace in his heaven. Peace throughout his entire universe is his highest wish and his greatest delight. Hallelujah. The song says, peace, peace, wonderful peace. You heard me trying to sing it. Comes down from the Father above. This peace comes from God. That's why we sing. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Amen. Just hold on. God is speaking directly to you. The word peace appears 237 times in the Old Testament were first appearing in Genesis 15, 15. It says, 
As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. First time God ever used the word peace. First time, amen, is ever mentioned in the word of God. And there's a rule, what we theologians call the rule of first mention. And I'm going to come back to that at the end of the message when I'm making the altar call. But remember, God saw fit to use this word shalom, this word peace, talking to a man that's getting ready to die. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So he says the Hebrew word translate as peace is shalom. It means completeness, soundness, welfare. It comes from the root word shalom, which means making amends or making whole or making complete, lacking nothing. That sounds like what Money and accumulation of assets can't buy. Huh? Money can't buy that. Money can't buy completeness and wholeness and, and, and good welfare. Hallelujah. Prestige can't bring it. Fame can't attain it. Rich folks are miserable because they have missing part. No peace. No Jesus, no Jesus, no peace. That's why they hang themselves, uh, kill themselves with millions and billions in the bank because this peace comes from God. The word peace, hallelujah, says, therefore having shalom means being in a state of wholeness or completeness without deficiency or lack. In the Old Testament about the wellness of others, sometimes it is translated as well-being or well well fair. Look at Romans 14, 17. He states that the kingdom of God is manifested itself in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. He said, you can't see the kingdom of God. When folks stand up and they say, well, I, I, I want to receive Jesus and, and I want to repent and I want to get baptized. I want to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. With your visible eyes, it's not under observation. Hallelujah. Right. But yeah. it is peace, righteousness, and joy down inside of you. Hallelujah. Once you receive it. Hallelujah. First of all, he is the God of peace because he created nothing but peace. So it is the peace of God because it belongs to him. You see what I'm saying? It's the peace of God, like the car of God, uh, the, the house of God. Amen. It is his peace. Peace belongs to him because he created nothing. Amen. But peace. Hallelujah. Uh, witness how by his word, witness by his word, the worlds were framed and fashioned. Without it was not anything made that was made. It was all good, which he made. He decreed. He said it was good. Okay, that's good. I just made that. That's good. It was all peace. Wasn't nothing chaotic. Once again, peace is stated to be a product of the Holy Ghost. It's the fruit of the Holy Ghost. It is the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Joy, love, peace, forbearance, kindness. These are all fruits of the Holy Ghost. Look at Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Trying to hurry up here. Amen. Against such there is no law. There's no law against having peace. You can have too much peace. You ain't going to get arrested for having too much peace. You ain't going to get arrested for having too much love, joy. Hallelujah. Jesus said in this world, you will have tribulation. Amen. You are not exempt from trouble. You're not exempt from folks hating on you. You're not exempt from folks lying on you. You're not exempt from folks being prejudiced of you. You're not exempt from being amen, going through some trials and some tests. You're not amen, exempt, but amen. You're not uh, 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 isolated, but you're insulated. Your peace insulates you. So what other folks go through and they have to have a valium. They go through and they got to have a hit. They go through and they got to have some vodka. Oh, no, you are 
are insulated, not isolated, because the peace of God, amen, that is dwelling on the inside of you, the fruit of the spirit is peace. It is knowing that when we have the spirit in us and among us, we are able to sit in peace. We are able to rest in peace and know that the Holy Spirit is with us and in us and the peace of God, amen, peace is knowing that our God is in control. Hallelujah. Look what the MR said. God is still in control. Look at what the ultrasound showed. God is still in control. That's how your peace comes. Amen. Look what Marvin Sapp said. He said, I never would have made it. He said, I could have lost my mind and I never would have made it. But this peace, someone else said, I almost let go. I felt like I just couldn't make it anymore. Hallelujah. But your peace kept me. Huh? Somebody here, you know, you would have been, you would have given up a long time ago, but you had a little talk with Jesus and told him all about your trouble. He heard your faintest cry and he answered you with some peace. Then the peace of God down on the inside said, I know I can make it. The peace of God said, I can do all things through Christ who is strengthening me. Hallelujah. The peace of God said, I'm more than a conqueror. The peace of God said, I am above only and not but not beneath. Hallelujah. The peace of God said, I'm going to be a lender and not a barrier. Amen. The peace of God said, I can do all things. Hallelujah. That's what the peace of God on the stormy sea in sinking sand. He speaks peace to me. Yes, he speaks peace to our our troubles and gives rest to our spirit. You were going to quit, but the peace of God said, hold on just a little while longer and everything is going to be all right because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You were going to throw a pity party, but you had a word, just a little word from the Lord and great peace have they that know thy law that no weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming. Tell somebody, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Holly, you'll be able to look back and wonder how I got over. Hallelujah. God going to bring you right on through that date. I said the date that's been set, God going to bring you right on through it. You got a date for the surgery. You got a date, amen, to show up in court. You got a date, amen, to take the test. You're going to look back. Holly, my soul look back and wonder how I got over. The peace of God brought me over. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody saying nothing up in here. Amen. But if you know it's the peace of God, it's the peace of God why you haven't lost your mind. If you know it's the peace of God why you haven't had a nervous breakdown. If you know it's the peace of God that you continue unto this day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 He has kept me in perfect peace with my mind stayed on Jesus because I know he's able to keep me. Thank you, Jesus. To the storm, he said, what? Peace, be still. Oh, that storm was raging, huh? Oh, it was worse than Hillary. And I said it was worse than Katrina. It was raging so much so the disciples woke him up. Lord, wake up. Don't you care we about to die? Huh? Don't you care, Lord? You, we're about to die. Jesus, you're getting ready to die too. That's what he was telling. Don't you care? Huh? And the Lord said, what is your faith? Faith. Huh? Where did you put your faith? I said, we're going to cross over. When he got in the boat, he said, let's go to the other side. He didn't say, let's go drown. He didn't say, let's go capsize. He said, let's cross over. So if it's on, if he said cross over, it's on autopilot and can't nothing stop it, Sister Sonia. Can't nothing stop it. I said, can't nothing stop what God has spoken over your life. 
and over your situation. Don't worry about the storms. Amen. Dr. Marissa, that is just a hurricane. Hurricane just a word. And he's been given a name above every name that's named, even in that above hurricane. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then he spoke to that storm and sent his peace up there, sent his word up there. Peace. Still. Huh? That's what he said. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Spoke to the storm. Said, peace be still. Quieten down now. <laughs> Quieten down now. And the Bible says, suddenly, oops, let me shut my mouth, the storm said. Huh? Okay. Okay, Jesus. Huh? Suddenly, there was a great calm because he spoke his peace to it. You are going to discard all hope, but this peace, Jesus said, I have spoken unto you these things, these matters, these prophecies that in me you might have peace. Jesus said, I'm warning you up front, huh? You're going to have some tribulation, you're going to have some problems, but I'm telling you this so when it comes in me, you will have peace. Thank you, Lord. I hope you're hearing me today because some of y'all have been laying y'all peace down. You've been sitting there on the coffee table and you have a panic attack and then you go back and get your peace. Uh-uh. Hang on to your peace. Amen. My peace I'm giving to you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. So my peace is always with you. May his peace be with you till we meet again. Huh? Isn't that what we say? So in these things, Jesus said, in these matters, I'm speaking this to you. I'm prophesying this to you so that in me, you might have peace. We are not exempt. We will have troubles, as we said, and you'll have trials. This peace, which surpasses, this peace transcends all understanding. Huh? You can't understand this kind of peace. You can't understand this kind of peace. There's no way to explain how people go through what they go through and they still in their right mind. They still want to serve God. Amen. Job's wife said, why don't you, amen, just hang it up, Job. Why don't you go ahead and curse God? Why don't you go ahead and admit he ain't coming through for you right? Amen. Why, uh, why are you trying to maintain your integrity? Why are you trying to maintain your position? Why are you trying to maintain your standard? Huh? For this God that's letting your flesh rot, stink. Huh? Pulse coming out. Head to toe. Huh? You sitting on the ground in ashes. You a man, a man of wealth. You a man of means. You don't lost your children and lost your property. Why are you trying to hang on in there? Huh? Why don't you curse God and go ahead and die? He said, you talk like a fool. A foolish woman. Huh? You know what he said? Huh? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Everything I got, he gave it to me. He can take it away if he want to, but I know my redeemer liveth. I know even though these flesh worms might eat up my bones, yet in my flesh I shall see God. I know I got something else coming to me. I know I can trust in him. I know he's in control. No matter what may come my way, my life is in his hands. Huh? So this peace transcends all understanding. No way to explain why you still sane in your right mind, still maintaining integrity, still trusting, but say like Job, I know my redeemer lives. Can somebody say, I know my redeemer lives. I'm going through this, but I know Jesus is alive and well. I know he sees me. I know he will perfect that which pertaineth unto me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's peace is from him, you are abiding in his peace. Look at Leviticus 6. Uh, I just want to go over a few verses uh, so you can have these. Leviticus 26, hallelujah, and verse number six. He says, I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. Quit letting people make you afraid. Quit letting people stress you out. He says, and I will make, uh, I will, I, and I will remove harmful beasts. That's some harmful beasts, huh? 
Devil on my track, trying to turn me back, the song says. Hallelujah. But he just said, I will give peace in this land, and you will lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will remove harm for beasts from the land, and the sword shall not go through your land. The battle is over. Huh? I said the battle is over. I ain't got to fight. I ain't got to fight. All I got to do is trust in the Lord because the battle is over. Lord, then he, here's another one. Numbers 25. Write it down. Numbers 25. Amen. I think that's verse number 26. I hope I didn't get that uh, mixed up, but I know it's somewhere in Numbers 25. It says, the Lord make his face shine up on thee. Be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance up on you and give you peace. That's kind of a doxology that the Hebrews use to this very day when they're ending service. I've heard, heard Rabbi uh, Khan and Rabbi, different rabbis, amen, when they speak Jewish voice, amen, on TV. That's his last doxology, his, his ending prayer for them. Hallelujah. Let's say it again. It says, the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. And be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance up on you and give you peace. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Huh? Oh, the Doppler said the hurricane's headed this way. The Doppler said the tornado's getting ready to cross highway so-and-so. And for me to take cover, yeah, I'm going to get in some kind of safe place and try to take cover. But amen, I, in peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. Oh yeah, I'm going to hit the numbers and buttons, Brother Earl, on my alarm. Hallelujah. I'm going to hold in, stay until it go beep, beep. And I know it's saying, okay, I'm set. If anybody come through the door, I'm going to go off. But all you're going to do is go off. You can't get me no help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, all you're going to do is let me know somebody's coming in on me. But I got to depend on the Lord. That's how I can lay down and sleep out here in this country, out here in this dark, hallelujah. Oh my God. Ah, hey, oh God, hallelujah. That's how you're going to rest. That's how you're going to get behind your wheel. Have a little talk with Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 119, 165. Great peace. And anybody want great peace? Anybody want some great peace? If you want some great peace, here's where you go get it. Psalms 119, 165. Great peace have those who love your law, your word. Nothing can make them stumble. Nothing can make you stumble if you love the word. And when you love it, you're going to be keeping it because he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So if you really love the word, you're going to do what it said do. And then you ain't going to stumble. You're not going to stumble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Proverbs 3, verses 1 and 2. Here's another way to have great peace. And it's a repetition, really, of Psalms 119 and 165. I had to Google it to make sure I wasn't getting it wrong. But there again, he repeats this word. So when God says something twice, amen, that, that, that means it's for sure. Everything he says is for sure. But he's putting emphasis on it. So Proverbs 3, 1 and 2 says, great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. Proverbs 16 and 17, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hallelujah. Just please the Lord and don't worry about what they're saying. Please the Lord and don't worry about what they're doing. Please the Lord and don't worry about who they got for a witness. Please the Lord and don't worry about who they got on their team. Please the Lord and don't worry about, amen, what they're saying in the background. Please the Lord and don't worry about, amen, how your boss is treating you. Please the Lord. Hallelujah. Promotion come not from the north, south, east, or west, but God is in control. God is getting ready to promote you. God is ruling. God is reigning. He'll take the company down. Huh? I say he'll take the company out if they don't treat you right. Oh, my God. He said, I don't rebuke kings. I don't rebuke officials for your sake. 
Don't mess with, amen, God's people. Touch not my anointed. Hallelujah. Amen. When a man's ways, just let your ways please God. Ooh, Enoch's ways pleased him so much, he got caught up. He got raptured. Huh? He got raptured before the flood. Amen. God took him out. But he had a testimony that he pleased God. Hallelujah. 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 Let that be your testimony. He makes even his enemies. Huh? He says, sit still all the time, make your enemies your footstool. I hope somebody is being encouraged because you have this. You have this peace of God. Isaiah 26 and 3. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. That's why I said, don't give up your peace. Don't let your mind wander off. Huh? Keep it on the word of God. Don't look at the wind. Don't look at the waves. Peter was walking on that thing. Huh? He was walking on that water, wasn't he? <laughs> he was walking on that water. But they said, but then when he saw, amen, the winds boisterous, amen, and the waves, huh? He starts sinking. You're going to start sinking for sure as soon as you start paying attention to what other folk are doing, what other folk are saying, and the situation and the circumstance. Amen. Just keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Huh? Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Singing, talking, driving, bouncing the ball. I got my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, help me keep my mind on you. Help me keep my mind on you. When the trouble arrives and the enemy come, oh God, help me keep my mind stay on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you change the trajectory of your expectation and your hope and focus it on, on Jesus, huh? All right. Don't even focus on the doctor. Don't even focus on the anesthesiologist. Don't even focus on the procedure. Just focus on Jesus. Jehovah Rapha, he's the physician. He's my doctor. Hallelujah. Yes, Our eyes are up on you, Lord. That's what Josephus said. I'm going to praise while you do what you do. In the same chapter where he says, uh, I'll keep you in perfect peace if your man is stayed up on me. He also says in verse number 12, verse number 12 of Isaiah 26, oh Lord, you will ordain peace for us. Huh? Think about God. I'm ordaining you. I'm positioning you. I, 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 I'm commanding this thing up on you. I'm installing. I'm installing. Yeah, let's do it that way. How about you get installed? How about peace get installed? I'm installing you in peace. Uh, he, he, it says, you will ordain peace for us. So he's installing peace for us. For you have indeed done for us all our works. Jehovah, you have accomplished all our works for us. We realize that it was your hand. It was your favor. Amen. We just praise you for what you've done. Whatever I have, whatever I am, whatever I hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory. You have ordained peace. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians uh, 13, 11. We're almost through. Hallelujah. On page five of six. Hallelujah. It's six, not a full page. Tell somebody, hold on a little while longer. Focus on the word of God. This is second Corinthians 13 and 11. Finally, brethren, he's ending. He's ending this, this, this chapter. He says, finally, brethren, I done told you a whole lot of stuff. I preached a whole lot of stuff today, y'all. But finally, Finally, Martha, finally, Jacqueline, finally, iPhone, finally, Elder Prince, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you, huh? Isn't that a wonderful farewell, huh? Isn't that a wonderful bye-bye? Live in peace and let the God of love and peace be with you. 
Philippians 4, verse 7, and then go to verse 9. Do not be anxious about anything. Don't be stressed about anything. Don't be worried about nothing. Don't be stressed about nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Why are you wasting time telling folk that can't do nothing about it, but go gossip and tell somebody else? Huh? Huh? It's okay if you're going to agree in prayer with somebody, but a whole lot of folk don't need to know your business. They ain't going to do nothing but talk about it. They ain't talking to Jesus. Huh? Hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Huh? So don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, take it to the Lord in prayer, supplication. That means add some fasting to it, like Sister Wright was saying, and with thanksgiving. Let you, so praise him also in advance. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God. I said the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Look what the peace of God does. It goes beyond what you can ever explain. It will guard your heart. Huh? It'll protect your heart from being broken. It'll protect your heart from a nervous breakdown. Hallelujah. It will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. Paul is saying, don't let me just be teaching to be teaching. Y'all it's these things. Tell somebody, y'all practice it. Tell somebody, practice it. Practice it. Practice letting the peace of God that surpass all understanding guard your heart and man because it's dwelling in you. Oh, it's there. It's dwelling in you. But you just done set it aside. That's why the Lord said, where is it? Where'd you put it? Where is the faith? Hallelujah. Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden. He gives rest, and with that rest, he gives the peace of God, which passes all understanding, which keeps our heart and mind. He is moreover the God of peace in the church. For whatever Jesus Christ dwells, he creates a holy place. So, amen, if he's in you, he's created a holy place in you, and he's created a peaceful place in you. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God, because you're doing what God does. Hallelujah. You're being led by the Spirit of God, and as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if I got some sons on the land, if I got some children on the land, dwell in peace and be led by God in peace, and let your peace lead you not your tragedy. Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let's examine ourselves. Are we being led by God's spirit or our needs, our emotions, our opinions, our feelings, our tradition, our bias? Are we trying to de-escalate a situation? Are we throwing uh, oil on the fire? Huh? Embers looking for a fight, looking for an uproar, or do you try to make peaceful conversation and somebody come to you with some gossip and some nonsense? Know how either don't even answer them or give a soft answer to turn that wrath away or to tell them that, that that's not going to help them. Let's pray for them. Hallelujah. Because there's some chit chatters. Amen. There's some Texas. Hallelujah. There's always critiquing and giving their opinion and trying. Amen. To sow discord. Amen. But he says, bless are the peacemen. Makers. Those are God's children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Use your peace. Realize your peace is worth something. Amen. Evangelist uh, Schofield, please don't nobody leave. I got some good stuff coming. I want to bless you with it. Amen. But, but Schofield told us we're women of worth. You're all children of worth. And you know what? You got peace in you and your peace is worth something. See? See, we're not trying to negotiate with the devil, not realizing, hey amen, we got the upper hand, huh? We got the good stuff. Look what the Lord says. I, I, he just brought this to me. Look at Matthew chapter 10 and read it when you have time to take time. But use your peace. Realize it's worth. Jesus said in Matthew 10, starting at verse number 11, whatever town, listen to this, whatever town or village you enter, Search, search around, huh? Don't always accept the first thing that's offered to you. 
It might look good, but God might have something better. Search there for some worthy person. So you going into a town, you going into a village, and you saying, now who's worthy? Huh? Who's worthy in this town for me to stay with? Huh? Because you can't lay your head down everywhere. I say, you can't lay your, you don't, you don't let your children go spend the night in and everywhere. Huh? You got to examine that thing. See, is it safe? Is it worthy of your children going in there? Huh? Right. Even check out your teacher, your child's teacher, your, your child's classroom. Now, is, is, is this worthy? Or is this going to help my child? Or is it going to pull them down? But this is Jesus. Let me get back to the subject. Whatever town or village you enter, search there for some worthy person and stay at their house until you leave. As you enter the home, listen, give it your greeting. Y'all done come up in here on the long run and came in my house. You better greet my walls. You better greet my house. <laughs> Glory. That's what it's saying. Huh? As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. See, God then said, here, I'm putting my peace on you. When you go somewhere, you got some peace that's valuable, that's worth something, and you can decide, y'all done done so nice to me. I'm letting my peace remain here. I pray when I was in McKinney, amen, there on Mallard Lake. Oh, that gave me such a big old queen size bed, such a comfortable place. Oh, bless these walls. And the peace that was there six, seven, eight, nine months ago, it's still in the house. Ha, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you ain't going to bless somebody and leave them something and take it with you when you go. Oh, no, no, no. You let your peace rest on it. Yeah. But listen, if it is not, let your peace return to you. Snatch your peace back. Huh? Don't be giving yourself away to no crumb. No, some old man that ain't worth nothing. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. God, your peace, yeah. brother Earl. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. If not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off of your feet. Yes, sir. Truly, I tell you, it will be more bearable, more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment. Huh? When the Lord pulled them folk up out of the lake of fire, this gone to hell, he said the ones that was in Sodom and Gomorrah going to have a better chance <laughs> than these folks that don't hear your word, these folks that's mistreating you, these folks that don't receive you like they should receive you. So don't worry about no apology. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Woo, y'all ought to be, my phone ought to be doing something. Hallelujah. Maybe just too excited to do anything. But thank you, Jesus. He said, it's going to be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment because they didn't do you right. You know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Anybody remember? How sober punishment, he said, how sore punishment is coming to those who are inhospitable, don't treat you fair, don't give you what you deserve, ripping you off, smiling in your face, but they are backstabbers. Value your peace. Don't give it up so quickly because of a call or a text or a social media post about to lose your man over a post, a picture, a lie. Value God's approval, not man's. Huh? I said, value your peace. Tell somebody, I'm packing. I'm packing. I said, I'm packing, Brother Earl. Huh? I ain't got no AK-47, but I'm packing. I ain't got no 38, but I'm packing, y'all. Huh? I'm packing my peace. I'm packing my peace. Thank you, Jesus. Remember the rule of first mention? Let me go back to that. Where was it first mentioned about grace? Somebody was getting ready to die. And so the first mention means that's the place of most emphasis and most importance. Huh? Remember the rule of first mention. In the Bible, in Genesis 15, 15, was a time of departure 
a soul was leaving time and entering into eternity, the summation of his life. In other words, how he was leaving here, the state of his soul. This is the altar call. This is the altar call. Genesis 15, 15. Abraham was clearly the recipient of God's grace. God promised Abraham, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. The welfare of your soul, huh? The welfare of your soul. It is well, it is well with your soul. You're going to depart in peace. You're going to depart in wholeness. You're going to depart in completeness, huh? You're going to depart, amen, in rest. You're going to enter into the rest. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 9 and 27 says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Hmm? Everybody on the line, everybody on Zoom, you either going to die physically, and as that day appointed, you just don't know what day it is. Huh? You never know the day you get behind the wheel. That might be the day. You never know why you're in your sleep. That might be the day. Or Jesus is going to descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are still in, alive and remain, huh? It's still going to be a time of departure. It's going to be a time of departure, huh? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, is it well with your soul? Have you got peace? Have you got the peace of God in you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you're going to either be absent from the body and present with the Lord, or in hell, he lifted his eyes being tormented yes. in the flames. Huh? If you go physically, only those two choices, no in between, no, no, no purgatory. Can't nobody send no rosaries, no Hail Marys, no prayers to get you out of where you lie. Hallelujah. Ain't no Bible for it. Ain't no Bible for it. Huh? No, no. Hallelujah. In hell, he lifted his eyes. Say, I'm tormented in the flame. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The rapture is the harvest of God's righteous seed. It's the harvest. God coming to collect, collect the righteous seed, the dead in Christ. The alive in Christ, with Christ in them, the hope of glory, with the rest, huh, in them, with the peace of God in them. Hallelujah. Those who literally are resting in peace. See, tell somebody, I'm resting in peace. We think only the people that's dead are resting in peace. And some of them that's dead are not resting in peace because they didn't die right. But we all are resting in peace. We're resting in the peace of God. huh? I said we're resting in the peace of God. We're depending on the peace of God. We're resting in the fact that he's going to take our vile body and he's going to transform it into the fashion of his glorious body. We're resting in the fact that when the Lord shall come, amen, this mortal is going to become immortal. This corruptible is going to become incorruptible. And we're resting in the fact that he will do it faster than I can blink my eye. Fast and I can twink my eye. Hallelujah. I'll just be standing there. Huh? Just, we're there. You're there. You're in heaven. Ooh, ooh, you're in heaven. Huh? Fast and you can blink your eye. You know, you can twink your eye because a twink is quicker than a blink. You can twink your eye and it doesn't interfere with your line of vision. You don't realize you didn't twink when you twinked. It's just that quick. That's how quick, think about it. You sitting there with your husband, sitting there with your wife, sitting there in your, and all of a sudden you just in heaven. 
You just in heaven. You didn't feel yourself going nowhere. You just there. Huh? In an indivisible amount of time. In an atomos. That's what it means. And you can't make it no quicker. It's so quick. It's, it's think time. It's think time. Huh? Now something just flashed through you, man. You already in heaven. Or you've been left behind. Huh? Or you've been left behind. So whether you're dead or alive, you are R.I.P. Rest in peace. Hallelujah. Go ahead and rest in peace. Hallelujah. In your day, you're going to be all right. When Jesus said to his disciples, this was after his resurrection. He never said these words before his resurrection. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. He said it twice when he first walked through the wall and came in that room. Hallelujah. And began to talk to them. And, and, and he said, peace be with you. Huh? It was like saying, I'm with you. And I'm going to be with you. And he breathed on them and told them to receive the Holy Ghost. And then in Acts 1 and 8, he reminded them that you're going to receive power. Wait for the Holy Ghost that I told you to receive. Huh? He wouldn't tell them to wait for it if they already had it. So he breathed on them and told them to receive it. And then on the day of Pentecost, amen, uh, on a, in Acts 1 and 8, before he sent it up to heaven, he reminds them to wait for the promise of the Father, which saith that you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come up on you. And so on the day of Pentecost, amen, they receive that peace when they receive the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if Jesus should come today, would your soul be spared? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the world, he's coming as a thief in the night. Yes. What answer would render your life to be spared when he comes as a thief in the night? Yes. Oh, soul will wake. Soon the Lord shall come and none will stand in his sight. But those who have been washed in the blood of the lamb when he comes as a thief in the night. Amen. We thank everybody. On